Good morning, church. I'm excited to be sharing the second message in the Lost and Found series. This deals with Jesus' story about a lost coin and a look in the house. Uh, in 1986, you could buy a four ounce silver coin for about well, $21. Today, you would pay about $279 for that same coin. That's quite a markup for that coin. It's significant. Well, I also know that in 1986, you could buy one share of Microsoft at its initial public offering, just $21, the same price as that four ounce silver coin. The difference is, is that the unsplit value of that $21 investment with Microsoft today would be worth, oh, about $8,928. That's a cumulative return of over 200,000%, massive amount of money. Here's the truth. When we talk about reaching the lost, when we talk about reaching out to people to see them come to the forgiver, well, I know this, the failure to invest in that endeavor will often be one of life's greatest regrets. I want to talk about that today in this second message from this Lost and Found series. In this passage, if you remember from last week, uh, it, it started with scribes and Pharisees challenging Jesus because lost and broken people were coming to him. Sinners, tax collectors, or what are referred to. He tells the parable of the lost sheep. He follows that up immediately. He's not through. He's going to unload on these individuals. And in the second one, he now will share with him uh, this significant parable of the lost coin. Starting in verse 8, it reads this. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The parable of lost coin, I submit to you, is going to remind us of an investment that is required in reaching the lost. There's an investment that's required. I don't think that Jesus is just being redundant. I don't think he's just telling another story here. I think Jesus is helping us to understand that there's more to reaching the lost. We understood last week five characteristics that we could all have in reaching out to the lost. Things like persistence, things like compassion. These things were in that story of the search for the lost sheep. But there's different things stressed in this story of the lost coin. First and foremost, it is a story about the reality that investment is required in the reaching of the lost. I want you to see this as I unpack it. The first investment is going to be the investment of resources. I find it fascinating that this woman loses the coin to dark house. It's apparently evening at night. She doesn't wait till the morning. Instead, she invests resources she lights a lamp and begins to search. This investment of resources is done knowing that there's the potential for failure. She chooses to spend the oil to light the lamp, knowing that she may not find this coin. Resources invested, understanding that we don't know what the return will be. She had no idea whether or not she'd find this coin but she invests anyways in its search. So she does it despite the potential for failure, but she also does it despite the temptation to delay. I'm sure it at least crossed her mind or would have crossed her mind. Maybe she should just wait until tomorrow morning. Maybe she should just wait until the sun's up and uh, shining through the windows and it's easier going to, to be to find a lost coin. But instead, she chooses not to delay. She invests the resources, and she goes searching for this lost coin. 
You see, if we're going to be a church that's going to reach out to lost people, it will always require of us an investment of resources, an investment that is not worried about, well, there's the potential we could fail in this. Yes, that could always happen. We're not going to worry about the temptation. Gee, maybe we should wait till a better year. I mean, Ian hit us hard last year. Maybe we should not worry about, well, reaching out to the lost now. Let's wait a while. No. We understand that to reach the lost, we will have to invest resources. And we will do that despite fears of failure, despite temptations to delay. We will seek the lost. This is going to be true for us. The investment that is required of us. It's going to be an investment of resources, and then it's also going to be an investment of labor. It says very next in that passage that she herself goes and sweeps the house. She's investing labor in the seeking and the reaching of individuals that are lost. She is personally engaged in the search. This is a weighted effort. She herself does this. She herself goes and seeks to find the coin. You see, I really believe that what Jesus is reminding us is we will have to invest our resources and our labor. It will require the personal weighted effort of our engagement to see lost people come to him. It's the second truth, the second investment. It's made the investment of resources, then the investment of our labor. There's another investment that is in this. Well, she invests labor and then she also then invests time. It says that she searches carefully until she finds it. Wow, what persistence, what diligence. Those are words we talked about last week also. Uh, the individual that goes out seeking the lost sheep, persistence, diligence. She, it says this, she searches carefully. And when does she give up? When the lost has been found. Wow. I have no idea what it's going to take to see lost people who live in the Northport area come to Christ. I don't know what type of persistence we're going to need. I don't know how much diligence we're going to need. I don't know how creative we're going to have to get thinking about how we're going to do it. But I do know this, it will take time and we'll invest that time because we want to see lost people found. Now I close this message with a simple question. So what will you do as Northport Church moves into a significant season of outreach? This summer we're planning tag clubs, June 5th through the 9th at Kirk Park. July 10th through the 14th at the Garden of Five Senses. July 31st through August 4th at Dallas White Park. We are going to target children and families of children. We want to see kids come have a great time at our Talk About God clubs. A lot of fun games, a lot of activity. Sit them down, refreshments. We're going to hit them with a great, powerful object lesson talking about God. And then we're going to invite everyone back to the church on Friday night for a barbecue. But there's more to this. To pull this off, we're going to need teams of individuals, an admin team that's helping us there daily, a trailer and setup team, transporting items that we're going to need. We're going to need a program team with a lot of teenagers in it that are just going to be willing to play with kids, have an enjoyable time. We'll have a teaching team that will deliver those, those short, powerful messages. And on Friday nights, we're going to need a hospitality team as we invite all these people to the church. We're going to need some things also. We know we're going to need tons of icy pops because that's what we want to hand a child. After they've been running around and they're hot, we're sitting them down. Here's the Bible moment. Here, enjoy these icy pops. We're going to fill coolers with lots of Kool-Aid and lemonade and tang. On Friday nights, we want to grill a ton of hot dogs and enjoy them with friends and neighbors. We're looking to have all that donated to us. But even more importantly, we're looking for people who will sponsor 
our big gifts. Our big gifts that we're going to use as a participation, motivation, reward. You see, every time a kid comes to a tag club, they've earned one ticket in the drawing. If they bring someone with them, they earn a second ticket. The next day, they come back, they get a ticket, the friend gets a ticket, they keep getting tickets. We'll hold these tickets for them. And then on Friday night at the barbecue, one of the things we want to do is we want to draw for those grand prize drawings. A $100 gift certificate to Spotlight Theater or a $100 gift certificate to the Northport Aquatic Center. We want families to feel blessed by us ministering to their kids. We're praying during this time. We're praying that God's going to expand our footprint as we reach out to children safely. We're asking God to bring a hundred visiting families to the barbecues. We are asking God to give a tithe of those families to us that will visit the church for worship. My question to you is, in light of Jesus' parable of the lost coin, what resources, what labor, how much time will you invest in this summer outreach event of New Hope Church? We invite you to be a part. We meet every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Our Hispanic congregation meets at 1.30 in the afternoon. We have a congregation celebrate recovery that meets on Tuesday night. Whatever you're a part of, we invite you to step up. And now, join us as we seek to find lost people. Blessings.